Okay, today we're going to be making a color block landscape. It's a very basic artwork, great for beginning with Google Drawings. If you haven't used it before, this is a great place to start. So the first thing you need to do is create a Google account. And what I do is, I mean, if you already are signed into your Google account, you can simply just type in Google Drawings and it should come up right away. Okay, so here's an untitled drawing. If you look back here, you can see it. Here's an example of a color block landscape I've already created. Our goal for this lesson is to create a landscape, so an area of land, and we're also going to show a value range of dark, medium, and light values, getting from darker in the foreground, and the medium values should be in the middle ground, and the lightest value should be in the background. And then I like to experiment with gradients and show you where those are, as well as copying, pasting some shapes. So quite a few different techniques. So the first thing we're going to do is once you have your untitled drawing, you're going to label it color block landscape. And the very first thing you're going to do is I just right click and you're going to background and I'm just going to do a blue sky to keep things pretty simple. Okay, the next thing you're going to do is use what's called the polyline tool. There's also the curve tool like if you want them very soft but the polyline will make it more angular and you're just going to click areas for the foreground. Now notice I'm going all the way back to the edge of the canvas here. I'm going down to the corners and then I'm connecting it back. And that is the shape I just created. It's very important that the two areas meet together. I'm going to the pencil, which is the border color. I'm going to choose transparent. And then I'm going to the paint bucket, which is the fill color. And I'm going to make this values of blue. So I'm going to start with the darkest blue, which would be in the foreground. Okay, the second area I'm going to make, I need to make sure I'm on the polyline tool again, so I'm just clicking that. And again, remember the polyline appears as a line segment at first, so you need to click that arrow and go down to the polyline. Okay, so this time I'm going to make, I'm going to do even more. Every time I'm going up and down, I'm clicking my mouse. Okay, and then again, you can see I have it matched with my edge. I'm going all the way down to the bottom, and then I'm going to match it up to the top again. Now, this color I'd like to be right here. This is my palette. This is the dark color that I started with. So this is pretty easy. I just need to choose the next lightest value. But now because I cannot see the foreground that I just created, I need to send this to the back. So to do that, you're going to select the arrow tool, the select tool, which is the arrow. And then I'm going to go to arrange. You can see it's selected because it has the blue box around it. I'm going to arrange and then I'm going to order and I'm going to send backward. Now I have my two areas here. Okay, my foreground and my middle ground. Now to make the background, I'm going back to the polyline tool. And I'm going to make this one like some tall mountains. Obviously with yours, you want to put a little more thought into yours. And I'm going to again go all the way to the edge. If it's just slightly a little bit shorter on the bottom, that's okay because this is going to be sent to the back. Okay, I'm going to go back to my fill color. I'm going to do a lighter value of blue. I'm going to go to arrange. I'm going to do send to the back. And there are my three different values, foreground, middle ground, and background, getting lap, lighter and lighter to show atmospheric perspective. Well, the next thing I want to show you is how to add a sun or a moon. So I'm going to go to the shape, and I'm actually choosing a circle, and I'm going to draw if you want it to be perfect, if you hold the shift, it will stay a perfectly round circle. You can see otherwise it stretches to be ovals and 
um, ellipsis. So I'm gonna, I like that size right there. And I want this to be filled like a sun. So I could go to a yellow or I could use a gradient. I'm clicking to the gradient and I'm going to fill that in so it looks like um, it's kind of like a radial, like a sun. So now, because that is in front of my mountain and that really doesn't make any sense, it needs to go behind, I'm going to go to Arrange, Order, and then send that to the back. I also want to keep it consistent and take away the border because nothing else in my picture has a border. The other thing I wanted to show you is how to make some trees. So I'm making kind of like these lollipop trees. Again, this time I'm going to not hold the shift so I get more of an oval. I'm going to take that border away. I'm going to make it a green, like a dark green like that. And that's the shape of my tree. Now I'm going to use my polyline tool. I'm going to make a tree trunk, right? Something basic here, like I showed you on my first example. I'm coming back together, and there's my trunk. I'm going to take the border away, and I'm going to make that a brown trunk. So, I have a tree. It's in the foreground. Now, if I wanted this tree to look like it's getting smaller because it's farther away, I can actually go back to my select tool, holding my shift button, and I just selected the oval and the trunk. So I have both things selected and you can tell because I have a blue outline around everything. Now I'm using my keys and I'm pushing Control C, which is copy, and then I'm doing Control V, which is paste. I just made a second tree. Easy peasy. All right, so I could put this guy over here. I'm going to paste him again. I'm going to just do a few. This time I'm going to hold the shift again and get that arrow and I'm going to shrink the whole thing so that it's small and it's still all selected so the entire tree is getting selected. Now I'm going to copy and paste him. Actually, I'm sorry, I'm going to delete that. And now he should be lighter in value because we're talking about atmospheric perspective and things should look appear lighter in value as they're getting closer to the horizon line. So I'm going to choose a lighter green and if I click the tree trunk, I can go to that palette where I got the original brown, and I'm going to choose a lighter brown. So you can see I did the same thing. Now I could shift, I'm selecting both of those, control C for copy, control V for paste, and I could even put one right here. This time I'm going to go to arrange, order, send it back, oops, undo. These are your favorite tools right here, undo. And I don't want it to go to back. I'm sorry, I want it to go backwards. So send backwards. All right, well, that's not working. Then I can select this instead and bring that to the front. So I'm gonna say, order, bring to front. And I need to collect the tree trunk and I need to go arrange order and bring that to the front. So you can see I've overlapped those. So sometimes you have to send it to the back or you have to bring it forward or bring it to the front. So you can see I'm trying to create the illusion of space by using different values in the foreground, middle ground, and background. And then I'm also using size as the trees look and appear to be getting smaller as they're getting farther away. And that is a basic color block landscape. Um, to finish it, like to save it, I would just go to File. I'm going to go to Download and JPEG. And you can see it downloaded right here on my screen. And then I'll be able to save it and I can upload it and submit the assignment or share it with my friends. All right. Thank you for watching.